Welcome back, Crafted Entrepreneurs. Today we're gonna talk about the four lies that are keeping you stuck in your business. So all of us get stuck at certain points in our business, whether it's an income stuck, an employee stuck, an upper level stuck, wherever you are right now, I hope by the end of this episode, you have a massive breakthrough by some of the tips that I share. Okay, number one lie that business owners tend to believe, especially in the beginning, success is guaranteed. There's a lot of gurus out there too that are gonna tell you your success is inevitable. Just don't give up. (laughs) I know a lot of people who have been trying for a long time to be successful and are still not successful. And it's not that it's just not their time. That's a bull crap lie. Your success is guaranteed when you decide to be the business owner that deserves success. But many times you're really excited in the beginning to start your business. You're excited to put that offer out there and then you get crickets. You have one person buy and you think, what the heck, I thought this was gonna work. And you start to go down a rabbit hole of finding reasons why you are the only person that is not guaranteed success, how maybe you're not meant to be an entrepreneur, you weren't meant to do this, people don't like you, like all of the things that start to make a case for why you're not gonna be successful. What I want you to understand is success doesn't come without trials. You're gonna have trials. You're gonna have tribulations. There's gonna be work and things that you have to do to get to the top. You're gonna have to overcome some fears, some doubts, some disbelief. You're gonna have to overcome betrayal. You're gonna have to overcome the fact that if you're still doing business like you were 10 years ago, it's not gonna work out for you. It's not, you gotta change with the times. You gotta understand and be innovative inside of your business. That is when success becomes inevitable, when you are somebody that is committed to growth. When you go, no matter what, I'm gonna be successful because I'm willing to do what it takes. Business and success in your business doesn't happen just because you're dedicated. I know somebody personally who was an amazing man, amazing, very dedicated to his business, works seven days a week on his business, been in business for 35 years, still struggles today, still hasn't quite hit that level of success that he's been trying for all these years. And it's not because his product's not good. His competitors have gone on to sell their companies to bigger names and make hundreds of millions of dollars. And yet he's still struggling to pay his employees on time. Why does that happen? Why does it work for some people and for other people they just seem to struggle? It's not the strategy, it's about who you're being. It's not enough to be dedicated. What you wanna do is Be dedicated to growth. Be dedicated to growth. Always be looking at what you can improve on. And this brings me to the next lie that we believe in our businesses, okay? And this is what he kind of struggles with. I can do everything myself. The biggest people I know who have had the biggest exits, who have made the most money, will tell you that being self-made is an absolute lie. If you wanna do everything by yourself, you're gonna struggle. Your business is gonna struggle because you're gonna be the bottleneck at some point. You are going to sabotage your next level of growth because you don't know what you don't know and you need to bring in people that are smarter than you. So I've come into this belief now, okay? Instead of I can do everything myself, it's I wanna put smart people around me. I wanna put people around me that know things that I don't know and I've gotta be willing to pay them what they're worth, right? I've gotta be willing to value them and invest in them to help me grow my business. And I'm gonna tell you a quick story of my husband, Chase. And he's not here, but he'll let me share the story. And he's growing a company. You guys have seen him on the show. I'm so freaking proud of him. He's killing it. But he was kind of getting to that point in his business where he was the bottleneck. Okay, he had employees around him, but he would get frustrated because people wouldn't do the sales calls like he did the sales calls. People wouldn't respond to emails like he would respond to emails. And I'd ask him, well, how did you equip them? He goes, well, like, it's not hard to write an email back. Like, don't they know to say this? Don't they know to say that? Like, we gotta set people up for success. So 
instead of saying, I can do everything by myself, ask yourself the question, how do I set up people around me to be successful, to help me reach that next level of success? And you gotta put standard operating procedures in place. My clients know this is my favorite word, SOP. Do you have an SOP for that? Because when you can give SOPs to people in your organization, usually they'll take it and run with it, they'll do a great job at it, and then they make it even better. So you give them a good foundation and then they can build upon that foundation and make it even better. They will respond to emails way better than you ever could have. They will have a better sales call than you can. Because while you're on the sales call and you're thinking, I gotta make this sale, I gotta make it happen, it's, you know, my life depends on making this sale happen. Well, the person who works in your organization, they don't know about all the financials happening on the back end. They don't feel that same pressure. So they're able to get on a sales call and be like, take it or leave it, we have the best product there is. And in that energy, they're able to sell a lot more because they're not bogged down by all of the real stuff that's happening behind the scenes in that business because they're not privy to that information. So you actually will go farther when you start investing in a really powerful team to come around you. And Chase is actually in New York right now because he's added like three more people to his team. I think he has like 14 people on his team right now and he's continuing to grow. And I see him grow as a leader because he's now self-aware of the fact that he was the bottleneck in his business. And so now it's become a game where he's going like, okay, you know, how fast can I equip these people to have success in my business? And how many more people can I take on as clients because I've equipped these people? So he's made it a game now. It's fun. All right, this is the thing I get most fired up and passionate about. So if I start yelling, just turn your volume down a little bit on this because I get pumped. Because business owners think they don't need a marketing strategy. And this is the biggest lie that you guys believe is you think that because your product is so good, because your service is so good, that people should just buy it. They should just buy it because it's 50% off. They think that's a marketing strategy. <laughs> That is not a marketing strategy. You need to have a well-developed and thought out marketing strategy. What does the overall promotion of your product or service look like on an ongoing basis? So if I'm walking up to you right now and I say, hey, you know, what's your marketing strategy for um, Q4? And you don't know, that's a problem. You're treating your business like a hobby. You're probably throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what's gonna stick. And all you gotta do is just take a step back, take some time to work on your business, devise a plan. All of us business owners know that we can make the best plans and still life is gonna happen and it probably won't work out that <laughs> particular way. It'll probably work out even better because that's your belief system. Everything's happening for your good and God's glory. So when you walk in that, you can walk in and just feeling more prepared in your business knowing like, hey, I've set you know, really good plans out for Q4. And I'm gonna do everything I can in my power and God's got the rest. And you kind of just walk in that trusting, that trusting, that's what it looks like to partner with God in your business is you have faith and you still are diligent in your work. And you think about all of the things that are gonna be happening like this year, you know, if you're listening to it like live, uh, it's, a, it's an election year. So there are gonna be different things that are happening in Q4 that you need to be aware of in the economy. I'm not saying your business is gonna slow down because I'm not in the belief that that's gonna affect my business at all. It's probably gonna help my business. How is it going to help my business? It's gonna help my business because I have a marketing strategy to combat all of that noise. What are you gonna do to cut out all of that noise so people still hear your message during a time like that? Plan for it now. Know exactly what your clients need to hear. What are they struggling with during that time? And how do they know that you are the person that's gonna deliver them from the pain that they're in in that current moment? So the last lie that I wanna share with you is you kind of believe, like sometimes you get like, oh, my product is so good, my service is so good. I'm just gonna ignore the feedback I'm getting from customers. So if you've gotten any type of negative feedback from customers, you can't just take that as a grain of salt. 
as, oh, those are people who are just jealous or those are people that, this is what I used to say, those are people that, you know, are just mean girls and, you know, they don't want to see me succeed. When I think there is a little bit of that that is true, you know, like sometimes there's just mean people out there, but sometimes there are people that their feedback is valid and we want to take it under consideration. And so uh, the things that bother you the most about the feedback, it's because there's a little bit of truth in it. So take that little bit of truth and say, okay, how can I take this feedback and make my program, make my service, make my VIP days, make my podcast, make my social media better. So we're not gonna make feedback and make us, let it make us bitter. We're gonna take feedback and we're gonna let it make us better. We're gonna let it make us better. That's such a powerful place to be. You know, about a year ago, I guess it wasn't even a year ago, like nine months ago, I was going through it, like through it in the mud in my business. (laughs) And I was getting some negative feedback. It was right around the time where I was like pivoting and calling everything Crafted Entrepreneur and people in the Mommy Millionaire community were kind of upset because they thought, oh, you've just left us in the dust, which wasn't true at all. But instead of getting mad, right, and going like, you know, F you, what I really did was I go, okay, there's a reason that they're feeling this way. And so what is the reason that they're feeling this way? Well, I could have done a better job at communicating the rebrand, the shift, the new program I had coming out. And okay, you know, I can't go back in the past, but what can I do now? What can I do different now? How can I be a better communicator now? So there were certain things that I implemented, like one of the coaches in my programs were doing, um, they give everybody a free 15 minute call. That was a student. So everybody got a one-on-one touch from somebody on our team so we could feel their concerns and we could reassure them that we're still helping them with their social media. We're still helping them, you know, grow their coaching business. Like nothing's changing in that department. She just added a real estate program (laughs) and it's a completely different program. And then that really calmed people down. They're like, oh, okay, I still get Kayla. She hasn't just left us in the dust. No, you're still gonna see Kayla twice a month, you know? And everything calmed down. So they could have gone a really, you know, bad way, right? I could have been like, nope, I'm not listening to you. Take it or leave it. I'm a great communicator. Probably would have, you know, ruined my reputation. But instead, we took that feedback and we went and got to work. Did it cost me a little money? Yeah, but it was worth it because a happy customer does a lot of good for your business because they tell people about what you've done to help them change their lives. And what does a negative customer do? Sometimes you never even hear from a happy customer, to be honest. But a negative customer, they'll go out of their way to tell the whole world (laughs) what you did or didn't do. So we want to like try to prevent that as much as possible. It's like that story in Nehemiah. You're building your business with one hand and you got a sword in the other. You got to like fight off those attacks. Be prepared. So those are the four lies that I see most business owners struggle with. That's what keeps them stuck. Which one do you kind of fall in right now? I know for me, the team building has been the hardest part, right? Like I think I'm the best at everything in my business because I'm the one that built it. But that is a lie, right? Because if you look at Fortune 500 companies, is anybody standing there alone? Did anybody build that alone? No. So that's proof for your mind that teamwork does make the dream work. And then now you have to go to work changing your beliefs around believing in people and trusting people and having good discernment over who you bring in your business and how you let them into your business and what they are privy to. How do you protect yourself? Change your beliefs around that. And then you change into a new identity of being a leader who can hold capacity for employees and creating a really positive team around you. So I hope you enjoyed this really quick episode of Crafted Entrepreneur.